Veritasium is a science video blog. I started it about three years ago and what I really wanted to do was communicate science to everyone and make science really beautiful and accessible. And since then it's grown to be a, a YouTube channel with over a million uh, subscribers and over 50 million views. So I'm really happy with where it's gone. Veritasium is ranked about 8th in Australia, which I'm really proud of, and of course it's one of the only really big science channels in Australia, or even globally. It's ranked number 7 amongst education channels. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's done really well. It's really been received warmly by a lot of people. I think a lot of that comes down to just this constant dedication to giving people the information and access to you know, resources and ideas that they don't normally have. Uh, when I was at school, I, I think I was one of the better students in my classes, uh, perhaps one of the best in fact, because I was really kind of results oriented. I always wanted to perform really well and achieve, you know, top marks. I kind of wanted to do that to prove it to myself, and I used to think to myself, like I wanted to be ranked number one in my school, and I used to think to myself, like what are the chances that I am the smartest kid in my school? And there are 400 kids in my class, you know, 400 kids in my grade. Chances are not high, right, that you're going to be the smartest out of 400. So what I had to believe was I can work harder, I can be more dedicated to this, I can figure it out. And I think it's that kind of uh, dedication, devotion, perseverance that really allowed me to achieve, you know, those top results. I had amazing science teachers all the way through. Uh, I just loved science. I did all three sciences. And what, just, what I really loved about them was the way they really helped me understand the world. Um, I think there's a lot of classes where you develop valuable skills, like writing, mathematics, all very important. But science, because it was so clear and you could really work out whether things were true or not, that was really important to me. Whereas in history, it also always seemed to be a bit more of like a matter of opinion or something. And, and I, there's something about fundamental solid truths that I find really appealing. I'm, I'm of that kind of mind. I had this physics teacher who was really off the wall. And I tend to believe that all physics teachers, all great <laughs> physics teachers are a little bit funny, a little bit crazy. Um, so he would say the zaniest things. Uh, I don't even know if I can come up with something uh, as odd or, you know, sometimes it was inappropriate, uh, but, it, but it still worked, like it was, it was functional for the, for the topic at hand. So, you know, I, I don't know, he was just a lot of fun. For my undergraduate, I studied at Queen's University in Canada and I studied engineering physics and mechanical options. So I was basically doing a lot of courses with the engineers and mechanical type labs, but I was also doing physics, heavy physics content. So it was almost like a dual degree, you're getting sort of the best of both worlds. I chose engineering physics because I felt like it was a challenge, but I felt like it was also practical. So those two sides appealed to me. Uh, I wanted to be learning skills that were very use usable, you know, in a job market, but also I wanted to be uh, really extending myself. I wanted to be forcing myself to really keep on learning and thinking at a very high level, and that degree definitely did that for me. My undergrad I did in Canada, in eastern Canada, and it was very cold for four years. So after having all of that winter, I decided it was time to come to Australia. Now, in fact, I am Australian. I don't sound it because I, I was born outside of Melbourne and then I grew up in Vancouver. So, you know, I was essentially Canadian, but I had an Australian passport and I had this tie to this country and I wanted to explore it. So after these four years of cold winter in Canada doing my undergrad, I came here and I just wanted to have a bit of an adventure. And I thought about what sort of things do I want to do with my future. I'd always been really interested in, in science, obviously, also in education. I loved teaching my friends. Uh, and I was also really interested in video making and media. And I felt like that was really, you know, if I could cause all of these things to sort of interact, that is what I wanted to do. So I ended up doing a PhD here in the School of Physics um, on the topic of how to make films that communicate science effectively. So I was trying to merge all these passions together and I think it worked out really well. Go. 30 second PhD. <laughs> yeah. 
The topic of my thesis was how do you make a film which effectively teaches science? And what I found was just saying the correct things and showing the best animations or real world examples that we can uh, doesn't really result in much learning, especially for novices. And in order to really communicate with people who never have, have really understood the subject before, you need to engage them on the level that they are. And often that is not a zero starting point. Often people come in, at least in physics, starting with this viewpoint which is uh, ideas which are not scientific and in fact they hinder learning. So I found by incorporating these alternative ideas, misconceptions, uh, into the videos, it actually significantly boosted the way in which students watch the video and also the way in which they learn from it. So that made me realize that when we go out there to try to change opinions and help people learn, we need to start with incorrect information. We can't just avoid it because it, it, uh, it won't work. The teaching that way doesn't work. Looking at the results as they came in was a very interesting process for me and I chose to do my studies in a naturalistic setting. We were using students here who were really studying first year physics. We were using all of them and we didn't force them to sit down in a lab and watch a video and then answer questions. We said, you can watch this on your own at any time during this week and answer the questions however you like and I will just look at the results as they come in. And frankly, because we put the same correct physics information in every video, I didn't really expect that we would see a difference in learning. I mean, it's a 10 minute video, it contains all you need to know, we should see the same learning across every video. So I was shocked when I guess I started to look at the data and I look, looked at the students who had really taken the process seriously, had spent a reasonable time watching the video and doing the tests, and I saw a significant difference between you know, fundamental students here who had just watched a clear expository summary and those who'd watched a dialogue or, or a refutation. You knew immediately looking at those results, these kids are learning much more if alternative conceptions, if misconceptions are presented than if they're not. And that was amazing because a, a lot of the literature in fact said what you need to do is make the message as clear as possible. Like strip out anything that's extraneous, give them only what they need to know. Um, and this in fact goes against that. It says if they're thinking something else beforehand you need to show that in addition to what's correct in order to change their opinions. So yeah, you know, it was amazing. It was a great, great moment for me. I studied a few of the graduate subjects here at the University of Sydney like uh, advanced quantum mechanics and relativistic quantum mechanics. Uh, they were quite challenging, general relativity. They were great courses. I thought they were lectured by, uh, by great uh, lecturers and I really enjoyed learning from them. Um, but a lot of what I did here at the University of Sydney was more you know, independent research and that's what I spent most of three and a half years doing. The independent research was really good and it was a good shift for me because I had been doing a lot of technical things, i had been doing a lot of calculations, problem sets, and then I started doing a PhD and it's a very different skill set where you're reading a lot of papers and you're writing a lot of things and interacting with a lot of people, bringing in these different, uh, different concepts and setting up your own experiments. So uh, doing the PhD was a nice shift for me and it was a, a really good experience. I felt like I was really broadening my horizons and, and opening up my skill set. So yeah, it was great. I think that the PhD really has influenced dramatically what I do with Veritasium. I mean, for one thing, a lot of my videos do focus on a misconception. Uh, they focus on things that I studied while I was here, or things that I, I, misconceptions I had myself. You know, I think there are these, all these areas where people think they know what's going on, but they don't. And uh, really doing the PhD helped me understand how to communicate with those people. Um, also, you know, I, I I practiced a lot of my video making skills while I was doing my PhD and so that's also contributed um, to, to the Veritasium project. Plus when I was doing my PhD I wrote a grant proposal to make videos about uh, high school uh, syllabus physics topics and so a lot of that has contributed to what I do now. So everything sort of that I did for my PhD has led me to this point now where I'm doing Veritasium and I think it's made my, my content so much better than it would have been without that additional study. I can remember distinctly in my high school physics class uh, feeling when my, my teacher pushed a block across the table and said, how does the force from my hand compare to the force back due to friction? 
and I had this voice inside my, set, my head saying, it must be that the force of his hand is greater than the force of friction. Otherwise, it couldn't move. And to this day, that is one of the uh, most remarkable examples that I like to talk to people about because I feel like that's something everyone believes. You know, I also think just, you know, dropping a heavy object and a light object, I've done that a couple times with people because it's so amazing the way people believe so strongly in something which is not backed up by physical experience. It's, it's something that we feel kind of innately, but if you ever look closely at the way that experiment works, you notice that you know, everything accelerates at the same rate. So, you know, these are some of my favorite sort of classic experiments to do with people. I remember another one. <laughs> there was this great misconception that my high school physics teacher dispelled where he would have us grab the tap, grab the, the gas tap on our table and also touch the wood. And he would ask us, which is colder, the gas tap or the wood? And I would say, well, obviously the gas tap, it's made of metal and you can feel it, it feels a lot colder. Uh, but then he points out the logical inconsistency of that. All of these objects have been sitting in this room for hours, you know, must have come to thermal equilibrium. They must be at the same temperature. You think, yeah, well, they must be, but they don't feel it. Yeah. And that's when you realize this effect of thermal conductivity is so much greater. The things that feel colder aren't necessarily colder, they're just conducting heat away from you very quickly. So I love going out on the street, you know, with different objects and asking people about that because, uh, you know, you can get some pretty, pretty mind-blowing experiences that way. Outside of Veritasium, I like to play soccer, go running, go to the beach. Uh, I also read a lot about science. I like to speak about science. I like to talk to teachers about what they're doing. I also taught for about seven years. So, you know, I don't know. I feel like my life is a, it, it, it totally encapsulated with this sort of mission of getting to the truth of matters. You know, so when I'm not thinking about the truth of science, I'm thinking about the truth of other, other things, social media and the way we interact with each other. I really want to take Veritasium to the next level. I want to make it bigger, I want to extend its reach, and I really want to, to make spectacular experiments. I think that's something that really uh, people can get behind. I also don't want to forget my sort of fundamental roots, which were to try to communicate science to people who don't understand science. I mean, a lot of my audience now, they already love science and they just want more of it. They want more things that they've never heard about before and really explained clearly. So I, I want to engage that audience, but I also want to engage an audience which is, you know, younger viewers and people who haven't had so much background in science. I want to be able to, to teach them as well and really make use of some of those skills that I've, I've gathered over the years.